hello everybody so today I'm finally filming my August and September wrap up which it is way too late to be filming and uploading this however I haven't talked about the books I've read in the past couple of months so I'm doing it today so in August I didn't end up doing a wrap up because it wasn't my best reading month I read four graphic novels total so first off I ended up reading Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith and I really enjoyed this one. This one was a webtoon and it's gotten a lot of popularity recently since it's been traditionally published and it is a Hades and Persephone retelling. And I really, really love the art style of this and like the coloring. I think the coloring is probably like one of the coolest things about this story. And I really like the story and the characters themselves as well, but the actual coloring itself was just absolutely gorgeous. Like this is a really beautiful to look at graphic novel. If you're looking for like a fun quick read or a fun quick graphic novel or anything like this, I do recommend it. I think I gave this one like four out of five stars. It wasn't like my favorite, but I still really enjoyed it. And then, I ended up reading volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Jujutsu Kaisen. I rediscovered my love for manga in August. I'm really happy because I've been reading a lot more of it over the past couple of months. I've been getting back into it and I'm really having a good time. Like, I'm enjoying myself. And, I mean, I have seen the anime for this. And with the anime, I don't know whether it was, like, my mindset at the time of watching it. But I feel like I didn't take a lot of it in and so I thought I'd read the manga that way I can you know understand the world building a little bit more and it has helped which is nice so I'm going to continue on with this series later on as well and I need to get I have four and six but I want to get volume five before I read the next few of this series because I know I'll just kind of want to binge them again but yeah love this story i love the characters it's just it's such a fun time so that was august and basically i feel like i've been sick almost constantly on and off for like the past few months and august was a particularly bad month with my health and i was just like sick for most of it so I really was not in the reading mood a lot, which is why I didn't read much. September is a little bit similar with my reading. I was kind of easing back into it with a lot of graphic novels and kind of short and sweet books, which I was having a really good time with. A lot of the books that I ended up reading in September were on my iPad and on audio, so I don't have the physical copies of them yet. I might grab the physical copies of a few of these that I mentioned, but probably not all of them. But the first one I read was Princess Princess Ever After by Kay O'Neill. I gave this one four out of five stars. It was a really, really short and sweet little graphic novel about a love story between two princesses, one of which really likes to challenge gender norms, and that's kind of touched on a little bit. It's not obviously heavily discussed because it's a 50 page graphic novel, but it was really, really cute to see. I really, really enjoyed my time and I thought it was adorable. And then in the same vein, I was kind of like on a roll with like those really short and sweet kind of cute books. So I ended up finally picking up The Tea Dragon Society by the same author, Kay O'Neill. And obsessed. I love this world so much. I read this one physically and then I read the Tea Dragon Festival, which is book two on my iPad because I don't have it physically yet. But oh my God, I love this so much. I absolutely adored this. Like again, it was like a nice, like short and sweet little graphic novel, but the artwork is just, it's absolutely stunning. There's so much more world building and little details that I didn't expect while reading this like you get to learn more about the different types of tea dragons and like their personalities and how they like to interact with humans and it was just really beautiful i loved this one and the second book so much i'm gonna read the third one pretty soon but i i had such a good time and it made me really happy when i was feeling really shit and sick so that was really really nice next up i read poems i sleep next to by shelby eileen I'm not gonna lie, 
I can't really remember many of these poems at all. I remember enjoying it and getting quite emotional at a lot of the poems because a lot of them did hit home. Obviously, because I don't have the physical book, it's a bit hard for me to remember specifically and because it was at the beginning of September. But I really, really remember enjoying it. It was a quick read. I also read it when I was like so, so tired. I'm pretty sure I read this at like 1am. So I don't know if I took much in off it, but I do really, really love this author's work. I did read her other poetry collection, Goddess of the Hunt, and oh my God, I love that so much. I ended up physically buying it just so I could annotate and tab it because it is absolutely gorgeous. I love this author's writing so much. I think she's a new favorite author of mine. Then I ended up reading, I can't remember which version, but it was a version of The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And I know this is a classic, classic short story. Like, I feel like so many people have already read it or at least heard of it, but I've never read it before. And I really, I, I wouldn't say enjoyed my time reading it. It's not a very enjoyable story, but I did like reading it and I did really like it by the end of it. I gave it four out of five stars as well. Again, it was like a quick, easy read that I kind of needed at the time. Actually reading it yourself makes you feel a little bit weird and uncomfortable and you feel very uneasy the entire time and I think that's done in a really well done way because it's basically about a woman who is locked in a room by her husband and just left there and so she ends up slowly actually going mad from looking at the wallpaper you know back in the day hysteria was a actual medical illness and diagnosed in women mostly as well and obviously sexism was rampant and it kind of delves into that a little bit like the language used isn't necessarily what we use today but it was still a really good exploration of mental health and abuse in women. After that, I read Alpha Volume 1 by Olivia Blake. I did like this one. It wasn't my favourite from Olivia Blake, but I want to read through her entire backlog <laughs> eventually. So I decided to read it because it was on Kindle Unlimited, I think. So I picked it up and it was fine. Like the artwork, of course, by Little Trimera was gorgeous as always. Absolutely stunning. But I don't know. It just, it felt unfinished and I know it's volume one but I feel like there just wasn't really enough for me but it was it was fun it was a good read overall it just wasn't my favorite then the last book I don't have a physical copy for was I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy if you're anywhere in the book community online or even if you're just consuming media like a normal person this book was fucking everywhere. <laughs> like, it went viral. I'm pretty sure it's still sold out everywhere, like, physically, and it's really, really hard to get a hold of. I do really want a physical copy of this as well. It is a memoir. It's about Jeanette McCurdy, who played Sam on iCarly, and it goes into detail about how her mother abused her and raised her to be a child actor from such a young age when she didn't want to be an actor and there are major major trigger warnings for eating disorders sexual assault parental assault that there's so many so many disturbing things that happen throughout this book but it was so well written it was incredible and i don't mean incredible in like an enjoyable way because it, it's very very heart-wrenching but Jeanette McCurdy's writing, I found it really interesting because she kind of writes from how she was feeling at the time. It's not necessarily an entirely retrospective point of view, like it changes. So when she talks about when she was a kid, for example, she'll write stuff like mummy and daddy and you know, like kid man mannerisms. She'd write from that sort of point of view and that would change as she got older and found herself in different situations. And I found that really interesting as well. Like it was just, it was really well written. I feel weird reading memoirs most of the time, but I mean, this was an easy five out of five stars anyway, even if it is someone's traumatic life experience. If you haven't already read this for whatever reason, I highly recommend you do. Look up the trigger warnings first, but if you think you're gonna be okay with it, 
definitely definitely worth the read it is fantastic i listened to the audiobook of this and it's narrated by jeanette herself and holy fuck it's so good it made me cry like her narration is just absolutely fantastic after those books i started to pick up books more physically again which was really really nice and also listen to audiobooks as well obviously but first i ended up reading luster by raven lalani this was actually a reread for me i did read this at the beginning of the year i think in february or march and I absolutely loved it back then. And I loved it now as well with my reread. I, yeah, it, it's, this is so fantastic. This is about a woman named Edie. She doesn't really know what she's doing with her life. She's seeing this guy named Eric, who is a middle-aged white man, who's an archivist. He has a wife. He has a adopted black daughter. And she finds herself intertwined with his family a lot more than she kind of anticipated. It explores racism, microaggressions, classism, like so many different things in this and it is absolutely fantastic. I love this book. I think it's so so good and I'm really glad I decided to give it a second reread because I had such a good time reading it. The next few books are all books that I read for the Breath of the Wild mini readathon that I did for myself at the end of September. I did film that one so I will leave the vlog for that one up here and down below as well if you want to check it out. But the first book that I ended up reading was Babel by Arif Kwong. I I fucking love this book so much. This easy five out of five stars might be one of my new favorite books ever. I <laughs> loved this so so much. It is about Robin Swift who ends up being taken from his homeland in China. He moves to London to be raised there and he eventually goes to study translation at Oxford University. And it's set in the 1800s. There is lots of discussion about colonialism and racism and microaggressions and again classism as well plays a factor in here and academic elitism. It's just fantastic. It is a dark academia novel and it is so well written. I go into a little bit more detail in my vlog but I did find a lot of this book like a good chunk of it was world building so if that's not for you maybe maybe you won't gel with this as much as other people. I feel like a lot of it was very focused on the world building and there's footnotes and a lot of it was focused on the detail of language and translation itself which I loved like I literally loved every single second I feel like every time I had a question about the world or magic system or anything it was eventually answered and I loved that and it gave me so many it made me feel weirdly nostalgic and I don't want to compare it to the wizard books because it's nothing like that. But it gave me that sense of nostalgia, like similar to that. And I, I just love this so much. The characters are amazing and so well written. I loved the friendship between all of them as well. We slowly get to know the other people in Robin Swift's cohort at uni later throughout the book and it's just so well done and i am so glad that i decided to pick this one up straight away because it is absolutely a new favorite i loved it next is another book that i go into detail in that vlog but i read love in the time of serial killers by alicia thompson and i think i gave this one like 2.5 or 3 out of 5 stars I was disappointed with this and I feel like that's probably my own fault because I'm not a true crime girly at all. This is about a woman named Phoebe who moves to her old hometown after her dad dies and she's doing her dissertation in the true crime genre. So it does delve a lot into that. And when she moves back, she suspects her neighbor to be a serial killer because he's acting a little bit sus. But I thought it sounded like a really fun time. I was a bit bored the entire time, if I'm being honest. I said this in my vlog, but I just don't know whether it's just because I'm not really into true crime or because it just genuinely was 
boring but yeah i did not vibe with this at all like i thought it was just gonna be a little bit more like mysterious or like action-packed but it really focused heavily on the true crime genre which was interesting in some respects because it does delve into how culture and society as a whole treats true crime as a genre and that's what she explores in her dissertation so i found those discussions fine but i just didn't care for the characters and i didn't really care about their relationship either which i i mean it's a romance like i should care about them as characters regardless of what they're interested in which is why i picked it up even if it was about true crime and i'm just a little bit disappointed because i feel like the characters were just a little bit bland and yeah I don't know I wasn't particularly rooting for them or anything I had more interest in the character's brother's relationship than her relationship and that was like a side thing that was like a mini tiny thing compared to her relationship so yeah just a little bit disappointed but I mean if you like true crime you might really enjoy this it's like i can see it being fun for some people but it wasn't fun for me and then finally another favorite book of the year i'm gonna really have to sort out what my actual favorites for the year are because i feel like i've had so many this year so this next book is a short story collection it is out there by kate folk I picked this one up because i saw books and lala talk about it on her channel and i was like yeah that sounds great let me let me add it i'll pick it up i fucking love this so much this was an easy five out of five stars this has 15 short stories and they're all very bizarre a little bit unhinged very very weird this is one of the weirdest books i've ever read possibly since bunny and i loved every second like there are so many weird short stories in here so there's like one about organ fetishism there's one about a house that has a head growing out of the floor and there's another one that's about like ai men and the dating scene and it's just like it's so strange like every single one made me think what the fuck did i just read but I loved it. <laughs> Again, I said this in my vlog, but I think if you really like Junji Ito's short works, you would really like this one because it did feel very reminiscent of the Junji Ito stuff that I've read in the past. Obviously that's manga and these are short stories, but it was the same sort of vibe. So I think if you like his stuff for being a little bit fucked up and weird, like I think you'd really enjoy this. And yeah, <laughs> I, I love this book so much. Uh, this has like kicked off a short story collection obsession for me. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know because I'm obsessed. It's it's ruined. It's taken over my life. I, I loved this so much. So they are all of the books that I read in August and September. Obviously, I read a lot of graphic novels and whatnot, but... I had such a good time reading them all and it was just really, really nice. Let me know what you've read recently down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like to as well. I'll leave all my socials down below, but I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tkitty with two Ys. I stream reading sprints and games as well. Look after yourselves. I hope you have a fantastic day or night and I'll see you all next time. Bye.